Um, there's about a million conflicts today. I didn't realize there was a middle school track meet which pulled a bunch of people. So um, that's why we are so thin on the ground. However, we are videoing this. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, as we come out of this whole COVID era, because we're, we're on the, we're like, sort of like when a submarine's heading for the surface, you know? We're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. As we come out of this, and especially as we take some of this load off of your, um, off of you with the online learning, because we're down to what, seven, I think. We might, at the most, I don't foresee adding more than one or two more. We went from the highest campus, I think, to the lowest campus. But there's some things that just involve good teaching that we really haven't pushed much this year just because of all the other things on your plate. But one of the things I'd like to start seeing between now and the end of school are phone calls to parents. I don't think there's anybody in here that would disagree. That's an important part of teaching. So the expectation, it always has been, but we really haven't stayed on top of this. The expectation is that if you have kids who are failing, that you will call or email them. Okay, and I realize sometimes you call and you just don't get an answer. I mean, I've been there. It's like this parent won't answer their phone. Email them, and then they've been notified, and that's all you can do. Um, I don't expect you to chase. Don't take your whole conference period trying to chase a parent that won't answer your phone calls. Make, make an attempt. If it doesn't happen, send them an email, and you've got your email's documentation. Now, what we would like, obviously, we want to document that we made these calls because, you know, I had a parent come talk to me last week about how they had not been informed about their kid's failing grade. Well, I don't know if that's true or not true because we, you know, there's really, we don't have a system of documentation. Well, Mr. Hutchings pointed out that Eduphoria has a nice place where you can put that in and then I can go look at it and say, yeah, here, th she called you three times. She got a hold of you twice, you talked about it. And he's going to spend a few minutes showing you well, I was going to show you, but we can't get his computer hooked up, so he's going to verbally, he's going to make word pictures of how to do this. I'd like to, I'd like to, because there'd be 50 ways we could do it. Some people do it on paper. Yeah, I mean, I'd like to stay, in, sort of like we all went with Canvas, you know. All right, go ahead. So. I, the irony is that I don't have the right dongle to show you technology that we're going to use technology, so bad on me. If you will, pull up Edge of Foria, please, and go to Aware. If you'll pull up Edge of Foria and go to Aware. And on the left-hand side of that Aware, it, it should be maybe a brown type screen. On the left-hand side, you'll see Tabs. And on the bottom, you'll see Student. There should be a tab that says student. You'll click that tab that says student. And up there, think about a student you have in your classroom and search for their name. Up there in that little space, type in their you know, first few letters of their last name and hit enter and see what it pulls up. So once you have a student, you see that student there, go ahead and select that student. Now you're, what you're looking at is that student's homepage is what I call it. It has their date of birth, their student ID number, their grade, whether they're at risk, EL, SPED, 504, et cetera. But the feature I want to show you today is underneath where their picture should be, there's little tabs. If you will click the little tab that says journal. So that's, there's going to be a little journal there. Now you're going to, unless you've been logging in to different ones and uh, yours is going to be blank. So if you will click add, is it add action? I believe it says add action. And you're going to see a little roll down menu that has note, phone call, email, parent meeting, reward. I love this. My entire phone log is with aware. So if I pull up and I'm going to use a, a student's name, student A, I pull up student A and I just spoke with the mom, I'm, I'm looking at it on aware anyway, then I click, I click phone call or I click note. So I'd like you to do a test with that student. If you could do anything, you could do a reward, note, phone call, anything you want. And just in the title, type in test test or test journal entry.
ma'am? Um, once you once you generate a title, like I'll say father, mother, student, grandparent, whoever I'm talking to, and it'll it'll pop up every time for you to select on the next journal entry. So I'm gonna have you do two journal entries on this student. So title whatever you'd like, and then in the uh, in the space below that says making the comments, write something there. It's permanent. Please don't write anything you should. <laughs> Just. Just write something. I spoke with mom. We discussed grades. I spoke with grandmother about her attendance. And then on the far right hand side when you wrote your comment, you'll see add, add, uh, add item. Just click that little add item. And boom, there it is. That's a, you'll, it'll always be there when you pull that student up. Any administrator could pull it up from, you can't see each other's, but we can see all of yours. Now go ahead and, and then take, and then just kind of go crazy with it and add one more note, anything you would like with that particular student. So this is, this is my journal log. And Dr. Matthews has said that this is the expectation as what we're going to do as a campus for your telephone logs. Now, you can continue using what you're using as a supplement, but the expectation is that it's in aware. That way, when parents, parent F calls me and says, well, that parent, that teacher's never called me. My student's failing. They got a 504, and they're not making the accommodations. I'll just, I can just pull that phone log up and go, no, no, she, that teacher's called you nine times already. So that is the journal tab in Aware. I log notes, rewards, little things. Anytime I meet with a student in my office, I put it in Aware. Uh, aware stays up on my computer all day. It's a really good tool. It's also a permanent it goes all the way back. You can pull up last year, the year before's journal entries. Um, there's other tabs there you can play with. You can pull up their test scores. Their forms is really important. Like if you under, look underneath their picture and it says that they're in the where and it says that they're, um, they're sped. You can go to forms and click, the, click that form. That sped, that sped paper works right there. Their IEP, their BIP. Really, really handy tool. And I just wanted to show you that today. Thank you very much. All right. If you would, you know, we've been talking about PLCs all year. And one of the things we started with at the start of the year is the four questions that inform PLCs. Now, I wouldn't have expected you to have this memorized except for the fact that I put out, know these, you're having a quiz, you know. So when the teacher says, know these, you're having a quiz, then you probably should know them. But if there's no, you don't get bad grades here, you just don't get rewards unless you make 100. So fill it out best you can. I don't expect exact language, but fill it out as best you can. Give me the four questions and inform PLCs. I will grade these tonight. Notice the quick turnaround time. And you will find your graded paper. And for those who make 100, something that you will enjoy in your box tomorrow. Any questions? When you get done, set it up here on the table, and unless we've got anything else, Mr. Phipps, you can go.